I'm going to show the Bitcoin to gold ratio. Um, um, many people call Bitcoin digital gold. Uh, we would put it in that category, a store of value, uh, a risk off asset. Uh, and last year during the regional bank crisis in March, uh, Bitcoin uh, shot up 40% as the KRE, the regional bank index, was imploding. And here again, the regional bank index is acting up. Uh, and after uh, a little bit of a correction, uh, after 11 ETFs were introduced, um, we are seeing Bitcoin catch a bit again. Uh, so this idea that it's a flight to quality or a flight to safety uh, is reasserting itself here. Uh, the, the reason we believe Bitcoin went down after the ETF, um, after the ETFs were introduced is because there was a lot of anticipatory buying before, uh, before Bitcoin or the ETFs came out. Uh, there was a bit of the sell on the news. These are the trading types who, uh, just are, are very opportunistic in that way. Um, as you know, or if you've been listening to In the Know, uh, 15 million of the 19 and a half million Bitcoin outstanding are in what we call strong hands. They're, they haven't moved their Bitcoin in more than 155 days. Uh, so, um, and, and this chart, uh, just shows you that even relative to gold, uh, Bitcoin has been rising. It is, there's now a substitution into, uh, into Bitcoin. And, uh, we think that is going to continue now that there is a much easier way, less fric friction filled way to access Bitcoin. The headlines, uh, were very strong. Uh, non-farm payroll employment came out at 353,000. Um, and, uh, that was nearly double what was expected, uh, 185,000. And even more important, perhaps, if you believe these numbers, uh, is that there was an upward revision to the previous month, 117,000, uh, upward revision to 333,000. Uh, that's pretty astonishing. So the, the two months together, December and January, which are very seasonal months, of course, uh, when you combine them, uh, the employment was up 686,000. That's a booming economy. Or is it? Well, household employment. So non-farm payroll uh, it surveys corporations, companies, and household employment surveys households and tends to capture more small businesses. Uh, so household employment was down 31,000 in January. And the previous month, December, it was down 683,000. So the combination of those two months down 714,000. So which is right? Honestly, it's, uh, this is a schizophrenic report. Um, Hedgeye put out a report today on, I think they called it a ridiculous uh, employment report. And they noted that full-time employment over the last year, the past year, has gone nowhere. In fact, it's down a bit. Part-time employment is up 870,000. Uh, this is not, this is not a strong sign out there unless everyone's going into the gig economy, uh, Uber, Airbnb, and so forth. Now, the other controversial, uh, statistic that, that came out with this report was average hourly earnings. It was up 0.6%. So 5% at an annual rate. Uh, it had been running 0.3% or roughly 3.5% at an annual rate. Uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, it now is uh, up 4.5%. Previous month, it had been up on a year-over-year -year basis by 4.1%. So the Fed's not going to like that. 
unless they focus on the productivity numbers that have come out recently, which are extremely strong and would suggest to us that many of the breakthroughs in technology, especially AI, are starting to impact the economy on a year over year basis. Uh, the non-farm productivity is up 2.7%. So 4.5 uh, minus 2.7 is uh, roughly, I guess, one. Let me do the arithmetic there. Uh, 1.8%. So that's below the Fed's 2% target. Another interesting statistic in this report, which may have been weather related, um, was that the average work week dropped six tenths of a, uh, of a percent. The only time that uh, steep a decline happens is either in bad weather or a recession. And uh, so we may have both in this rolling recession that we've been talking about. Um, I'm taking this one a little more seriously because in December, meaning seriously than just weather, in December, it also was down 0.3%. So that's two consecutive months. Um, and we're also very focused on real world data that's been coming out. Uh, you see that UPS is laying off 12,000 people. You see a lot of layoff announcements. Uh, and you see, and one of the reasons you're seeing these announcements is revenue growth for many companies has gone negative. In fact, in what I would call the traditional world or the old world, the non-digital world, um, we're seeing negative revenue growth, 3M minus 4.5% year over year. That's volume and price down. That's the equivalent of nominal GDP. Um, UPS down 7.8% on a year over year basis. And these companies touch the world and maybe that's what's going on right now. China seems to be, uh, in a downward spiral. Certainly its stock market is, is looking that way. And the statistics are, are disappointing. Perhaps the debt load associated with 20 years of buy the dip property um, transactions in China um, reached a, an untenable point. Uh, many, many statistics out of China are, are negative. And Europe, by some measures, is in recession. So maybe these multinationals are suffering more because of what's going on in the rest of the world. Um, but I do think we are not isolated from the rest of the world. So again, lots of confusion. And anyone who's been listening to In the Know for a while um, knows that uh, I've been saying it's going to be very confusing, very confusing. And uh, this is just one indication. Just one more thing before we, uh, before I introduce you or reintroduce you to Brett. Um, when I first started in the business, um, in the late seventies, I was in college. Um, I heard portfolio managers back then talking about the worst mistake they had made in their lives, their professional lives. Um, in the early seventies, after we, after we went off the gold exchange standard, and all hell broke loose. Prices started going crazy. We had the oil embargo, quadrupling of oil prices. Most economic indicators were in nominal terms. They didn't break out real from price or real from inflation. And uh, because of that, they looked at earnings exploding and they could not understand why the market was going down. And they kept buying the dip, buying the dip. It was a big mistake because what was happening back then was uh, inflation was the only reason earnings were going up. And the market doesn't pay for uh, earnings caused by inflation. 
And so that's when we started separating inflation from real growth. And we've been there ever since. Today, we might be on the opposite side of that problem. Now, most uh, portfolio managers, as they're gauging the health of the economy, they look at real GDP. And, and inflation is just a separate uh, metric that they know uh, the market doesn't pay for. So, you know, um, well, that's okay until you run into negative money growth caused by, I mean, negative revenue growth caused by uh, falling prices, companies losing pricing power and uh, unit volumes not being that strong. So um, again, we're in this uh, topsy-turvy world and we think we're there because of a, a, a lot of, uh, beca because of what is going on with disruptive innovation, which is highly deflationary uh, and, and is going to create a lot of creative destruction, which will also be deflationary. One is good deflation, as deflation associated with innovation and the other is bad deflation. So um, we do think uh, that the price indicators, the broad based indicators like the CPI and the PPI will enter ne negative territory this year. We've been talking about the bigger risk being deflation for quite some time. And uh, uh, the companies are now starting to report uh, some of them, both inflation and, and prices coming down and weakness in underlying economic activity. Uh, and we always say innovation solves problems. And we think innovation is going to solve uh, one of the biggest problems that companies are going to have in the next few years. And we think that's deflation. Uh, deflation is going to hit margins and could hit them hard. Uh, and we think innovation um, will, uh, will help corporations who embrace it aggressively, especially in this new AI age.